Hi, I'm Mary Lyons, the Wealth Woman. I'm Eric Alexander with Benchmark Income Group. Welcome to the Big Wealth Podcast. Today, we are going to be teeing up a series that we will be doing at the beginning of January. And this series came about because Eric, my fearless co-host, reached out to an author that uh, I think I could honestly say we are both obsessed with. Yeah, who, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, who writes on uh, Enneagrams, which is a, a personality uh, survey assessment. I, I, I don't know exactly what to call it, but yeah. um, on, a, on a very deliberate whim, Eric reached out to see if he would be open to doing a podcast with us. And lo and behold, he responded back. And <laughs> we feel like we have had the opportunity to spend a ton of time with um, a celebrity that we look up to. And yeah. it's it a, such a cool thing to get to share with you guys. And all the credit goes to Eric for this one, yeah. because I don't think I ever would have been brave enough to reach out in the first place. Yeah, it, it would. Uh, I had you playing in the back of my brain going, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Eric, just do it. <laughs> I'm like, eh, what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so the, and the, the impetus behind this was really kind of fun. You and I have been talking a lot and we've, uh, been obsessed with this and sort of foisting this concept upon all of you of mindset beats strategy, strategy beats tactics. Right. And and one of the things that we've been talking about for a long time is this idea of mindset and money and how if you don't know what's going on in your brain, uh, there's a better than average shot you're going to screw something up because you you don't know what demons are playing in your brain. Right. 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 Um, and so the the guy's name that we got a chance to chat with, a guy named Ian Morgan Cron, and um, he what wrote a, cool a book. Dude. He's such a cool dude. Like, I just want to hang around in his brain. Um, he wrote a book called The Road Back to You, which was, was all about Enneagram. Uh, great book. And the, the great thing about these Enneagram books is once you kind of know your number, they're very short reads because you you kind of skip through the first part of it you go directly to your number and then you throw the rest of the book away that's how i originally did this cuz i'm like yeah. yeah i don't care about the rest of you people i'm just going to read about my <laughs> my my type right and then i went back and had to reread it going okay now what about the rest of the humans in the world which is really cool um and then he wrote another book that i just finished a couple months ago called the story of you so the road back to you and the story of you mm -hmm. which is helping you sort of process through how you got to be to become an eight or five, okay. right and and how to have a better story going forward right john a kept talks about this a lot of what are the soundtracks in your brain yeah and what's your playlist un... yeah what's your playlist right and so i think that idea of the story of you was you know what's going on what soundtrack what's your playlist and how do you rewrite that so that it's more useful yeah so that it actually serves you as opposed to maybe uh hindering you. And, you know, this is, this is one of those things I work with a mindset coach. I've talked about him before, Kevin Keppel, brilliant yeah. guy. Yeah, um, and the reason that I meet with him every week is because I think mindset really drives almost all of our decision-making. And, you know, we've talked yeah. about it before on the podcast, the difference between a scarcity mentality and an abundance mentality and how differently you make decisions, depending on whether you're in a space of scarcity and fear or whether you're in a space of abundance and love. And, you know, I think really understanding the motivators that the Enneagram is my understanding of it anyways, after yeah. all the conversations we've got to have with Ian is really about what motivates you. What, what right. motivates and drives your daily behaviors and the way you express your belief system. And that's part of the reason that I find the Enneagram so fascinating is that it's not, you know, functionality or even personality. It's what's motivating you to do the things that you do. And if you can get brutally honest with yourself about your motivations you can address whether they're healthy or unhealthy, and you can begin to be very deliberate about the choices you make as opposed to right. being reactive without even really realizing that that's what you're doing. And the, the more time I've spent, you know, sometimes it's really hard because you have to confront things about yourself that you don't like or that you're right. ashamed of or, or right. that you don't want anyone else to know. Um, but when you do those things, it's amazing how different your life starts to become because you yep. can operate from a place of very intentional decision making. And so, you know, Eric, when you came back and after uh, you got the response and you told me that this was even a possibility, I was just in awe 
right? Because your, your bravery to even reach out and set this up and start to have those conversations was really fun for me to witness, but it's also inspired me to be braver in my own life. And so getting to share these conversations and even the experience um, that you and I had yeah. when we like got to sit down with Ian has been really I don't know. I mean, it's just been such an amazing experience for me to be a part of, and I'm excited to get to share it with our listeners. Oh yeah. And, and I, I remember said it was a very, very, very long day, very long day. <laughs> it was a lot of talking. <laughs> it was a lot of talking. And, and it was funny because I, the whole day I'm thinking I've got to split my personality in half right now, because there's a part of me that just wants to sit and listen and like absorb all the information and so I've got to both absorb and also be present and like ask, you know, ask sort of useful questions, but right. really the whole time I just want to sit and listen. Like I just wanted to be a fly on the wall. Uh, so it was, it was a whole like day brain splitting activity, which just, it was exhausting, but it was so cool. It was energizing and exhausting at the same time. I mean, being present yeah. like that and that focused for an entire day is definitely, it's definitely a lot. And I think it was a lot for him too. Um, and he was oh, such he a was trooper. Ex- I mean, he was exhausted at the end oh, of the day. It was, was so funny. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about what this series is going to cover because there's yeah. quite a few episodes and, um, the first episode, I think if I remember correctly, um, and we may get some of this out of order, but just so you get an idea of what the series is about, the first episode is really going to be about understanding the Enneagram types. Right. So there's nine different types and each one has wings that will influence how it actually expresses itself. But in the first episode, Ian's really going to go, um, you know, as deep as you can get in a short, you know, in 30, 30 minutes. minutes or 45 minute segment, right. Um, going into what are each of the types and, you know, the characteristics of those types. And to that end, if prior to that, you yep. want to have a better idea of your type, Eric, will you share with everyone how they can figure out their Enneagram type? Yeah, so there, there's a number of tests out there. And one of the things we really wanted to make sure we we brought to sort of the listeners is the ability to go out and do that ahead of time. So we've mm-hmm. got about two weeks. It'll, it'll drop that first week in January. Uh, there's a test that his group puts out called the IEQ-9, I think is the, yep. the name of the test, the IEQ-9. And there's an IEQ-9 assessment for you individually. And then there's also a second one that you could take, which is how do how do I and my spouse work together, which at the end of that day was a really fun experience watching the watching Mary read through the IEQ-9 for her and Mike. <laughs> Uh, that, that was entertaining. Yeah. So this is an interesting thing because, um, when you, so this might not mean anything to you if you haven't taken your assessment yet, but I am an Enneagram eight. So I am very much motivated by like justice and protecting the little guy and being the voice for people who don't have a voice. And, um, you know, I, I sort of like, I don't know. We used some online assessment way back when, when I first got introduced to Enneagram and um, Mike on his assessment came back as a five. And for anyone who knows my husband, a, a five is very analytic. Well, you say what a five is because aren't you a five, Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Hardcore you say five, what a five right. is real quick. Yeah. So five is the investigator it is sort of the short, the shorthand version of it. We want to know all the things. There's no end to the internet. Uh, and Super the fear analytical, is, right. frequently introverted. Um, and, and so like Mike came out of five and I'm like, this doesn't quite feel right. Like aspects of it felt right because yeah. Mike is very analytical and he likes data and he likes chewing on the deep, heady intellectual stuff. Um, but he's but not an introvert. Like, but he's not an introvert, right? Like he's the person that shows up and he's the life of the party. I mean, that's like, that's why I like to bring him with me because then he can be the life of the party and I get to tag along for the ride. And, uh, and so, you know, I've, I've always just assumed that that was right. And when we did the couples, IEQ nine, he came back as an eight. And I, I mean, my first reaction was there's no way I was like furious. I was like, it was two hours of this. Yeah. (laughs) Poor Eric had to like, listen to me downloading on all of this after all like engaged all day long. And, um, 
But then the more I got into it and the more I read it, I was like, wow, this really explains so much of our interactions. And just for the record, eights don't usually marry other eights because it creates a yeah. power struggle. <laughs> Two matchsticks right? trying to make it, you know. Yeah. And, and frequently lots of conflict, but I do think that Mike and I have kind of, um, we express very differently because he is what's called a thinking oriented eight and I am an action oriented eight. And so the expression right. is actually very different. And I think the way we've managed to navigate this in our relationship is that we each just take areas that we're like, this one is mine. And the other one says, well, this one is mine. And then we sort of stay out of each other's way is how we manage it. But right. Um, but I think this assessment was actually like well worth it because oh gosh, yes. it was much more accurate and in depth than any other assessment I had taken for the Enneagram previously. Yeah. And the, and the great thing that we're, we're excited about, uh, on that piece of it is there's a discount code for being a, a benchmark listener. So the, if you go to the IEQ nine assessment and there'll be a link in the, in the bottom show notes. In the show notes. Uh, yeah. But it'll, the benchmark is benchmark is the uh, discount code. So it's 20% off uh, all the tests that you want to go take there. So I'm, I'm very excited about that because I paid full price and uh, <laughs> 20% would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, the, well, I, the, but it's such a good test. And so that, that first one is really all of, and I don't remember all eight. I remember snippets of it. And then I, my brain petered out at the end there. But I think that first big one is just who, what the heck is a one? What the heck is a two, right? Mm -hmm. And then one of the ones that I thought was so fun, and it was so fascinating is, okay, if I'm a five or if I'm an eight or a one, how do I show up in the world? How do I make choices? Because a right. lot of finance is really, interacting with your money, making choices, right. doing doing things. And so if I walk into the room as a one, how, how do I actually make a choice? And and what does that decision process look like? And and where are the foibles? Like where where are the things that I got to go watch out? Uh, yeah. you know, what do I naturally do well? And then what is it that I that might make me stumble? Right. What tendencies do I have right. that might actually be blind spots when I'm dealing with my money? And, you know, the thing that I think is really kind of cool about this is that when we talk to um, Ian uh, on the front end, they have done a lot with Enneagram, but they hadn't related it back to financial choices. And right. so the the thing that I love about this, too, is that this is fresh content from you know, a gentleman who has, I mean, his podcast has over 20 million downloads. Yeah. So the fact that he took the time to do this for us and for our audience, I think is such a big deal, but you know, it's uh, it's content that he was excited to do because he hasn't, he hadn't, you know, focused on the financial aspects yeah. of the motivation. So, you know, I think the other things that we cover, right. It are things like, how do you talk to your spouse? about money once you know what their Enneagram number is. Um, yeah. How do you not one, shut down a six when you're in the middle of that conversation? How do you bring the best right. out of them? Which is really right. cool. Well, and I think it'll be really interesting too, because I talk a lot about Mike, but at the time we were recording this, I think I was still under the impression that he was a five. And the reason that he was showing up as a five, by the way, is because when eights are stressed, they lean into the five traits. So they tend to withdraw, become more analytical, spend more time being deliberative. And so right. um, so it's really interesting in hindsight to be able to identify why I thought he was a different number than he actually is and wow. how like my own Enneagram sort of blinded me in some ways to like the truth of him. And so yeah. it's, you know, we've been together for almost 20 years. We like, if you include dating and marriage uh, in, in May, Mike and I will have been together for 20 years. So to be in like year 19 and learn something new, it's like, okay, oh, was cool. I just being willfully ignorant here? Or is this something that's manifesting differently now than it used to? I mean, this is the thing as humans, we're constantly evolving. And so yeah. the more we can tap into what drives that evolution, where our growth comes from, if growth is even important to us, I think the better off we are. So what other topics, Eric? Are we yeah, and the, the funny part on that one, I'll do one other topic because there was eight and I don't remember the nuances of each <laughs> yeah. of them. Uh, we'll be surprised when it we'll, comes like, out. Oh too. yeah, that was a great conversation. The one that was my absolute favorite, we almost nixed. We're like, yeah, I think we've covered that. 
and we almost didn't do it, but what is the legacy of each of the types? Um, gosh, I'm still thinking about it. It's such a good conversation. But that idea of w- what happens at the end, right? Because m- money is a tool to get what you want. Money is not money is not the driver of all things. Well, it shouldn't be. Not the driver of everything in life, but it is the tool. It is the hammer to get the job done. And mm-hmm. so at the end of the day, once I've got enough and there's food on the table and and I'm not homeless and living under a bridge, what what is the what is the self-actualization goal for most of us? Right. Mm-hmm. And so being able to kind of walk through that and look at that under each type and see Mike and you and me and my wife and and talking about Ian because he had a very different Enneagram type than than any right. of us was really fascinating to see. Um and it was it was number seven. It was episode okay. seven in that that list, but it was hands down my favorite. Well, we are really excited to get yeah. to share this with us. Um, we'll have a quick break uh, the week after Christmas before New Year's because we're right. going to spend some downtime with the family and just relax. And then we're going to launch ready to go in the new year. And especially if you're dealing with your own New Year's resolutions and trying to start the year off right, yep. what better place can you start than talking about your motivators, not just financially, but in general, and then also linking them to the choices that you're making with your money. Because after all, money is just a tool meant to help you build a life you are excited to live. So right. we look forward to sharing Ian with you, Eric. Eric, thank you again for setting oh, yeah. that up. I think everybody's going to be pretty excited about this. If you're looking for me, you can find me at The Wealth Woman, wherever you social media. Eric, where can they find you? Yeah, I'm at Economics with Eric, wherever you social media. And I hope you and yours have a uh, safe and happy holidays. Sounds good. We'll see you next time. See you.